Welcome back to another video from the Winslow Gospel Hall as we continue our simple studies through the book of Joshua. Uh, today we're reading from Joshua chapter 3 and verse 7 to 10. Joshua chapter 3 verse 7 to 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. We have noticed already from the early chapters of Joshua that there is a pattern beginning to emerge. For example, at the beginning of chapter 1 we have the fact that the Lord speaks to Joshua, and then Joshua speaks to the nation, and then there is a response from the nation. Here we have that again. When the Lord speaks unto Joshua in verse 7, and then Joshua then speaks to the nation of Israel, Joshua said unto the children of Israel, verse 9, and then there is a response from the people. I was thinking that that really is a challenge to each and every one of us. When we hear the word of God taught, God's messengers come with God's message, and we hear it. But then there should be a response to it, as this pattern we see in Joshua, the Lord speaking to Joshua, Joshua speaking to the people, and then a response from the people. And I wonder whether when we hear the Word of God, how often when we've heard the Word of God taught and we recognise that God is speaking to us, I wonder whether we have responded to it. We notice also that uh, a phrase in verse 7, which is common through Scripture, and the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. This day. That's a key phrase, and we find it nearly 20 times through the book of Joshua. This is the first occasion that we find it. And uh, a number of times throughout Scripture, this day. It's almost speaking about this moment. What are we going to do? How are we going to respond to this particular moment? And as we think about the situation that we find ourselves in, uh, it's a challenge as to how we are going to respond to the, the circumstances that surround us at the moment, whether it's going to be positive or negative, whether we're going to use our time wisely or not. This day will I begin to magnify. Of course, if we go to the end of Joshua, we find the last occasion when that phrase is mentioned in chapter 24, uh, probably a well-known phrase and verse to us, where we have the challenge put out, choose you this day who you will serve. What about us? As far as our life is concerned, this short life that we spend down here, and we've heard it so often, only one life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. Are we going to put our all and our, all our efforts and energies and enthusiasm and passion into serving the Lord? Are we going to put it all in for him when we think of all that he has done for us? Choose you this day who you will serve. Another key verse with this phrase in it is in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And it says these, these words. Who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord. Who then is willing to consecrate or to fill his hand in service this day unto the Lord? wonder how we will respond to these words from the word of God. But then notice also it says in verse 7, uh, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, speaking to Joshua in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. To magnify really is the thought of to make great and to be powerful, that they may know, that they may be clear that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. What a promise to Joshua. What assurance, what confidence Joshua could go to the nation with that as God was with Moses, so he would be with him. The power and the authority of the Lord would be shown by the way that he leads the nation. 
But then notice also in verse 9, And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. Come hither. The thought is to draw near. The thought is to come close. And we need to do that if we're going to hear God speak to us. We need to come hither. We need to call, draw near. We need to come close. I wonder whether uh, we are putting ourselves in a position where we might hear God speak to us at this particular time. To draw near to him. To spend time with him. And one thing that's really been driven home to me over the years is the fact of not just reading the scriptures is so important but not just to read it and so that we've done our daily reading and we've got the ticks but tick boxes done in our in our year planner or whatever we use but actually to read the scriptures and to dwell upon them to meditate meditate upon them we thought about that in a previous study to meditate upon the scriptures and to let god speak to us just to mull these things over in our mind, to read the Word of God, to listen to it taught, and to think and meditate upon what we read, and to ask ourselves as we read it and as we meditate upon it, what is the message that God has for me in these verses? And as a result of that, what do I need to do in response to it? And so then we come to verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know, that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites. And these seven nations were going to be driven out. God was going to drive them out from the land. The land was going to be the children of Israel, for the children of Israel. And notice what it says, the living God is among you. What a great encouragement that would be to the nation. So many other gods that other nations would have, but no, the living God is among you. Uh, how wonderful when we could turn to chapter 1 and verse 5. They could be told there, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Here we have the fact, the living God is among you. Chapter 1 and verse 9, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be not dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Whatever circumstance, wherever you are, wherever you go, the Lord your God is with you. What a, cha what a great encouragement that is to us today. And notice what it says, the living God is among you. Not like the false gods of other nations, but the living God is among you. We have the presence of the living God among us. And also they are told that he will, without fail, drive out the nations from them. It would be good enough if we read here that the living God is among you, that he will drive out the nations from before you. But it doesn't say that. The living God is among you and that he will, without fail, without fail, drive out from before you these seven nations. To be told that he will drive out the nations. Good enough that he would be there and drive those nations out, but he will without fail. There's an absolute certainty about this of the work of the Lord with regard to the nation and bringing them into the land. So the challenge and the encouragement to us in these short verses is this, that we might come near and we might draw close to him and that we might hear and know what the, that the living God is among us and that he will without fail do a great work among us. Now thanks for watching and we pray, trust that uh, these words might be a blessing to you. Please like and share uh, these videos on the Winslow Gospel Hall and also on Instagram and Facebook and uh, we look forward to be bringing you another video again soon. Thank you very much for joining us.